My goodness, this is a, a an interview that I've been looking forward to selfishly. Um, I am a type A personality. I'm a Stanford graduate, and there's a lot of um, double-edged sword items that go along with that type of personality, as we talked about a little bit before we got on. But before we get into that, why don't you tell everybody what is dopamine? So dopamine is a chemical we make in our brain. It is a neurotransmitter, which means it's a molecule that bridges the gap between neurons. Neurons are the long spindly cells that make the circuits that make us who we are. And neurotransmitters are the, the chemicals that can fine tune those circuits. Dopamine is the uh, most important neurotransmitter for the experience of pleasure, reward, and motivation in a particular circuit of the brain called the reward pathway. When we do something that's pleasurable or intoxicating, we release dopamine in that specific reward pathway. The more dopamine that's released and the faster it's released, the more reinforcing or addictive that substance or behavior is. Um, and the other important thing is that pleasure and pain are co-located in the brain so that uh, they work like opposite sides of a balance, which is really important to understanding what happens in the brain as we get addicted. That is to say, when we do something that's reinforcing, we release a lot of dopamine in that reward pathway, but no sooner has that happened than our brain adapts by actually down-regulating dopamine transmission, not just to baseline levels, but below baseline levels. So we go into this mini dopamine deficit state right after a pleasure before going back to baseline. So this is really important to recognize that even if it's outside of our conscious awareness and not a blatant hangover, that for every pleasure we pay a price, that price is pain. And that if we expose our brains, our reward pathway to repeated pleasures, ultimately that initial spike in dopamine gets shorter or less potent and, and, and shorter duration. And that after response, that dopamine deficit state gets stronger and longer, such that over time we can actually recalibrate our pleasure pain balance so that we're living in that dopamine deficit state. And that's essentially what happens when we become addicted. Now we need more of our drug in more potent forms, not to get high and feel good, but just to bring our balance back up to normal dopamine firing levels. And when we're not using, we're experiencing the universal symptoms of withdrawal from any addictive substance, which are anxiety, irritability, insomnia, dysphoria, and craving. So when you're talking about this, and I heard um, Dr. Um, Andrew Huberman use a, a brownie as the, as the example, I believe it was, and it's so me because you're having that dessert and say, so say sugar is the, the drug of choice that we're talking about at the moment. And before you even finish it, you are experiencing pain in wanting a second serving to um, alleviate that pain and get back that dopamine. And then this also speaks to why if you, if you stay away from sugar, you stay away from cocaine, stay away from the drug of choice, you're doing a, a, a detox and a reset. So one thing I wanted to ask you, so when you are, your, your dopamine deficit is lower every time you use, but does that mean that your baseline of dopamine is lower or do we all have the same baseline? Does that make sense? Do you yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great question. So, so first of all, we all have a baseline tonic level of dopamine firing. So dopamine is always being released in our reward pathway, being pulsed at a certain amount. But the amount that's being pulsed or released probably differs from individual to individual. So how much dopamine you're pulsing at rest may be different from how much dopamine I'm pulsing at rest, right? Both of us will have an increase in dopamine firing above baseline when we ingest an intoxicant or eat a brownie, which is akin to a drug, or do some very reinforcing behavior like watching a TikTok video or playing a video game or looking at pornography or whatever our drug of choice is. Um, but it is very true that we probably have different baselines and that people who start out 
with lower overall levels of dopamine firing are people who are potentially more vulnerable to addiction because they're already starting out at a lower level.